AP Chemistry Molecular Geometry Hybridization Involving D Orbitals. Specifically today we're going to be looking at hybridization involving D orbitals, sp3D hybrid orbitals, an example using phosphorus pentafluoride, sp3D2 hybrid orbitals, and an example using sulfur hexafluoride. Hybridization involving D orbitals. Atoms in the third period and beyond can also use D orbitals to form hybrid orbitals. The mixing of 1s orbital, 3p orbitals, and 1d orbital leads to the 5sp3d hybrid orbital. This will form a trigonal bipyramidal shape. Let's consider the phosphorus atom in PF5. What is the electron configuration for phosphorus? We know that phosphorus is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. The orbital diagram for ground state phosphorus will be as follows. We assume the 1s2, the 2s2, and the 2p6. Those are going to be completely filled. Then as we go into the third period, we'll have 3s2, and then an electron in each one of the orbitals in the P sublevel. In the ground state, there are only three unpaired electrons available to bond with the five fluorine atoms. In order for bonding to take place with all five fluorine atoms, one electron from the 3s orbital is excited and promoted to the d orbital. So we're going to assume that in front of this 3s, we have our 1s2, our 2s2, and our 2p6, as you can see in your notes. So the second electron in the 3s is going to get promoted. So we'll see the electrons in 3p. And then finally, we'll see this last electron right here in 3d. As before, there is a problem. The single electron in the s orbital has a different shape than the three electrons in the p orbital and the one electron in the d orbital. So again, it is necessary to mix these five orbitals together and create a hybrid of the five so phosphorus can bond with all five fluorine atoms. This is known as sp3d hybrid orbital. So to review, we're going to be taking an electron from 3s, the three electrons from 3p, and the one electron from 3d and mixing them together to form sp3d. So we're going to see one electron in each of these orbitals in this hybrid model. And these will represent our bonding electrons. So another electron from each fluorine can come in and form a covalent bond, giving each atom its full octet. Finally, consider SF6. Follows the same formation as above, except will include one more d orbital. This will create the sp3d2 hybrid orbital, forms six bonds, and has an octahedral shape. In summary, the following steps allow the prediction of hybrid orbitals used by an atom in bonding. Draw the Lewis structure for the molecular ion. Determine the electron domain geometry using the Vesper model. Specify the hybrid orbitals needed to accommodate the electron pairs based on the geometric arrangement. So what did we learn? We went over hybridization involving d orbitals. We talked about sp3d hybrid orbitals. We looked at an example with phosphorus pentafluoride. We talked about sp3d2 hybrid orbitals. And we looked at an example using sulfur hexafluoride. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.